and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 254. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Fly. G'day. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I'm alright. For someone who spent 24 plus hours awake recently. Oh my. Why? Uh, I could. But also because I kind of forgot to go to bed. Uh, I got caught up in listening to other people chat all night and then realized that I had to vote in the morning. And then I had a guest coming around after that. And then that was meant to last all day until this recording. But I did manage to get some sleep before this happened. Oh, wow. I hope you're not too tired yet. Oh, no, I'm wide right awake. All right, all right. And our guest for this week is Detective Blue Thunder. Hello there, everyone. So how are you doing, BT? I'm doing great today, Norman. Thank you. So... Early, you mentioned to me that you were lacking in sleep too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's but it's not because of I have something to do in the next morning. It's because of a uh, I have this uh, school project, school science experiment that I, I sadly have to do on myself, <laughs> which means I have to wake up for twenty four hours nonstop. That, that's something new, really. Like I remember back in my days when I was in the schools, science experiments weren't like this. Like, usually, I remember. Not doing this kind of things, like no, no, the, yeah, but whole school project is just like for our class. Hmm. All right. All right. For, our, for our science practicum. All right. All right. So before I carry on, uh, I have to give an update to the show. Many of you may have noticed that um, the iTunes or the Stitcher Radio or the podcast in general has not been updating. Well, things are breaking down on the server's end. So, uh, please bear with us till we get it fixed. Um, as for now, um, the normal MBS show, the news show, uh, might get the updates or upgrades that you need, but unfortunately for the, uh, what you call this, review and discussion show, that might take some time. Like, uh, I'm going to just see what I can do and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'll try harder. And if you want to help me faster, uh, the Patreon's there. It's there for a reason, guys. It's there for a reason. But anywho, um, let's get on to the show. So, BT, since you're new here, I'm going to ask you the four important questions. And said question is, favorite character? Okay, so this would come at a surprise, but my favorite character is actually Applejack. Oh, really now? Because, first of all, I like, uh, southern people in general, so I, I like the accents, I don't know, I just, I just like it. And then the second is, in my opinion, my personal opinion, Apple, Applejack goes through a lot of character development, which makes what she is today, which is, I think it's a good thing for the show and the character itself. Alright, that's good. And favorite episode? Uh, I can't, I can't, I cannot decide. Really? You can't at all? Uh, okay, if I have to take one, just one, uh, uh, I don't know, it, 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 it could be that one episode where, uh, I forgot the name, that, the, the, the episode where Suri Palmer first appeared. Um, Suri Palmer, that would be made in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed that episode. And then maybe the second one is, uh, Probably, oh, I forgot the episode. Season five to thirteen, whatever that episode is. Five to thirteen. Wow. I just have to. Uh, uh, let me see if I can remember. If not, then nope, I don't remember season five to thirteen. Maybe you viewers at home can help. So that. Oh, episode... oh, it's the, oh, sorry. I just remembered. It's the Duke Princess's Dream of Magic. Sheet. Ah, that is a good one. That is a good it, one. Yeah, and then actually, uh, before we finish, uh, the third one is Twenty Eight Pranks Later. Twenty Eight Pranks Later is really good. <laughs> Twenty Eight Pranks Later is good. So, how did you become a fan of the show? Do Do you want the long version, the short version, the abridged version? I got to MLP through a keychain. Keychain. What kind of keychain? It's Twenty Fifteen. I I know I joined the fandom so late, but. Bear with me, it's 2015, around early, I don't know, yeah, early 2015, I don't know, there's like a friend of mine that is having her birthday, and then uh, we are given keychains, and then, because you have to uh, randomly pick one, and then I pick a rarity keychain, if I remember. Okay. 
And then I asked, hey, what, what is this? Like, uh, because I do like, uh, cartoons. I, so I just ask any cartoons and I was like, well, what is this? Is this a cartoon or something? And then the friend of mine that is having a birthday, uh, she said, oh, it's MLP. It's Marvel Pony Friendship Magic. And I was like, okay. And then I, I let, I leave, I just put it in my head, just shove it on the side until around June, June, I think it's June. I was like in a hotel. I was bored at the time, and now I was like, heck, uh, let's, and then I just remembered MLP, and then, heck, I, I'm just gonna play an episode. So, I played, so I played the, the, uh, episode one, and then I was like, hey, this is, this is pretty good, and then I watched it again, and then, and again, and again, and then I finished the whole season five in two and a half weeks. Ooh, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I know. I know. I just, I just, I just stream marathon, just hours and hours until then. So, what your friend did was a smart plan. Was well, really smart. <laughs> I no, was... she, she actually doesn't know what bronies are, but still. Well, okay. Well, she could have been smart by. Hmm. I want everybody to join the fandom. I'll make them take a keychain. <laughs> but if if she does think like that, well, then it worked. <laughs> uh, well, welcome. for at least like one of us, anyway. <laughs> welcome to the fandom. So thank you, thank you. What do your family and friends think about your love for said show? Oh, they're oh, like I I have one of the most luckiest luckiest parents because they're so supportive. Really, you know. My mom and dad agreed that slowly finds like a show made for. Still kids, but in the same time, like, don't be, like, affected. I, and I know it's weird, but, like, don't be affected by the uh, show or something. Like, if you come to childish or stuff. <laughs> uh, well, if they seen the show, I don't think you can be childish in the show. No. My mom, I think my mom support me the most because she seen an episode and she think it's good. She, she's, again, she doesn't actually watch uh, MLP in, like, in a weekly basis, but still, she watched it. One time, one time, when I showed it or something like that. Ah, all right, all right. Uh, so I, I guess we all have been there. So we all have been there. And your friends? My friends are really supportive. Actually, I have this one friend, uh, in my school. Luckily, he is in my class and he likes MLP, but he does not join the fandom, <laughs> but, uh, he does enjoy the show. Hmm, all right. Especially, he enjoys, uh, the comics. Ah. That is rare. That is rare. Yeah, he he said it to me multiple and countless times. He enjoyed the comics. Is it the fan comics or the official comics? No, IDW ones, oh, I think. Oh, really now? Yeah, it, I know. I, I mean, I myself doesn't don't really see the comics because firstly, it's expensive here. Yeah, and true. I'm not too bothered with the comics, but well, in this opinion, it's really good. Ah, well, talking about comics, right? So, uh, I hope your friend's ready for this because, uh, coming around later in the year, um, IDW is gonna have, a My Little Pony, the movie comic prequel. So, yeah. <laughs> Amazon listed down on their website and it seems that we'll be getting the prequels in comic form. Yay! Yay! So, written by Ted Anderson and uh, drawn by Andy Price. So, yay, that's really awesome. Uh, this comic is going to have 96 pages um, and going to be cost around um, 16 bucks. Oh my god, that is expensive. Yeah, and our money is also expensive. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So, <clears throat> this is going to be interesting. Toy, what do you think, man? It's interesting, but I'm also not thrilled. I believe I mentioned on a previous episode of MBS that I'm not a huge fan of cross-media canon. Mm-hmm. And depending on how the how canon to the show the movie is, that will depend on how much I appreciate the prequel being in a comic book rather than an animated short. Well, I do believe uh, doing a comic is much faster in telling a general story and like you can chip out on certain things like probably this would save um, Hasbro a huge amount of money in doing the prequel in comic form rather than animating and voicing the characters each so yeah it does make sense in a business wise way but I'm just surprised that they're doing the cross media pollination kind of deal where 
um, the comics and the cartoon are in the same universe. Like, usually they try to stay far away from each other. I'm just surprised that they're doing it now. Yeah, I think there was news about them uh, at the start of February or partly through February where they had actually announced that there was going to be comics released that were canon to the show or tied into the show. And I think this might be what that that news was referring to as well. No, not really, because I think the one that they're referring to is issue 51 to 53. Oh, that's right. Yes, it was. Yeah, and I think that one... Is not, I, I don't know how that one's gonna work because as for now, only issue 51 is out. And according to one of our previous guests, Kechi the Changeling, he said that it, uh, <clears throat> he said that it may or may not, uh, read it directly to season 7. I, I'm not 100% sure how he worded it, but I for one am interested to see where the story goes. Who knows? It might be something new and creative. This would be a first for Hasbro to directly um, relate something that from another media to another media. And VT, what do you think, man? Uh, as I said earlier, I don't uh, follow the uh, comics in general, but if, but I mean, if they want to make a prequel, hey, I'm fine with it. I, uh, I, I'm just like, okay, and then just, I guess, leave it behind because yeah how would this affect you if the prequel is kind of a must to watch the movie or are you not interested in the movie at all no no i'm interested in the movie and i think uh for, i think we need to give the prequel as like a follow before i follow up to what happened mm, all right all right that's for the comics news um but let's get into you man like you you're on here because well you're a content creator and you had me on your show before so uh, what do you do what i do uh, so i do interviews with other uh fan with fandom related people it's usually like 15 to 20 minutes long not 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 that long but in my opinion interviewing people is fun because it's like the people that usually does this they I have to like uh depart and then uh just join and then talk casually or something which that's why I really like the, uh, the interviews but the funny thing is the the idea for the interviews doesn't actually it's not in my mind when the first time I started the YouTube channel oh really no and that is uh detective bt dot well uh youtube dot com slash detective bt not yet, but still, uh, Detective VT is available on the YouTubes. So, what was your original idea or plan for the channel? My original idea is uh, actually to make reviews of episodes. That's my original idea. If you if you're gonna ask uh, how do I got in the idea for the interviews, well, it's simple. I was like uh, in a hotel. Yes, in another hotel. I think all my ideas and all of my all the related things just came out to me in the hotel, <laughs> which is weird. Uh, so again, uh, uh, at the time, I was uh, laying in my bed just watching MLP stuff. And then, uh, if I remember, I watched this one guy. He interviewed Little Shy. And I was like, hey, uh, what, what would happen if I interviewed the people from the fandom? And I put it in as a, another video. So, well... It just happened, I guess. I started to contact people, and then I got Tridashi, a little shy, and then other, other, and then other people. Oh, all right. It's now currently in its seventh episode. Uh, yeah, seventh episode. It's we're just posting today at the time of this recording, but I have like a ton of work to do because I think with the amount of people that I've interviewed and plan to interview, I think the episode's gonna go until like episode 15 or something. Nice, nice. I know there's a lot. So, you mentioned you watch some other YouTube channel um, interview a brony. So, how did that inspire you to well, um, create your own thing? Because some people might think, hey, that would be a great idea, but oh, somebody else is still already doing it, so I might, as, I might as well not Order. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, uh, I I know I, I like watching interviews with uh, other people from the fandom, and I was like watching, and then it, and then as I said, it comes to me, why does no one 
ever saw the series of talking about their lives and like they just never dealt and with the uh, with the other spectrum of uh, MLP like the content creators because uh, I know they have life I know they have work and I know like they have background blah blah and it's never touched so it came to me like I should really do a series where I interview people and know more about them. So, and then I want to share the interviews and uh, other people's likings and other stuff to well, the world, really. So that's how the interview series started. Ah, all right, all right. That's cool. That's cool. And well, usually when people do an interview show, it's always best to approach it from a different angle because the same thing done multiple times can get really, really bored. And the same question asked multiple times can be redundant. So yeah, uh, I think what you're doing is approaching it from a different angle. From when I was on, it was really interesting. Yeah, thank you, I guess. So have you ever thought about, well, inviting people from the show or something like that? Well, I plan to uh, invite people like Michelle Krieber or uh, <clears throat> Gabriel, but at the current moment, I'm currently dealing with, of course, sending professional emails to people. Yeah, I'm, I send professional emails for kind of living, and it's not at all easy to reach the people because you have to first write a professional email, then you have to be uh, confirmed first. Then you could either be sorry because of these things or... Just like, okay, sure, that could be fun, like some people. All right. Well, because who knows, one day you might invite Lauren Faust on and you can ask her all about the things she yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. You do have a good point. Yeah. Talking about Lauren Faust, right? So um, she was in the news recently and someone asked her, um, Yeah, Lauren, you like ponies, sorry, um, you like ponies, Spitfire and Sorin, whether they are... Uh, whether they are a love couple? Wow, that sentence sounds so not right. Like, dear Lauren, you like ponies. Sorin, Spitfire and Sorin. Whether they are a love couple. Is that right? Like, I, it feels that's wrong. The grammar no, is yeah, bad. It's, it's, Grammatically, it's horrendous. As yeah. a writer, that offends me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, I, I was just, I was like reading it over and over again, like just thinking like, is that right? Or am I, okay. Anyway, uh, glad to know that I'm not the only one. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Lauren responds, they are just friends, ellipses, with benefits. <laughs> oh God, Lauren, what, what is wrong with you? Uh, not, nothing's wrong with her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, I mean, in my opinion, she does this quite a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's hilarious. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know. The, the comments on the Equestria Daily news article are amazing. Just all the the fighting and crying about Soren Dash. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I'm currently opening. Luckily, I'm currently opening Equestria Daily's uh, article on this, and it it's people just uh, arguing about is it. It can be, it can be Lord Foss. There's a guy that says Pinky Dash. <laughs> and then, oh, oh, Father Dash, uh, all this. So anyway, um, honestly, I don't really read the comments just because, well, that's not the news. The news is really what's on top. But still, I find it highly entertaining and funny that Lauren is trolling the fans this way. Even though that she did the general idea or she spawned the idea for the show, um, but she's not working on it anymore. So whatever she says is not canon. But I still like what she says because um, fanfic writers and comic book artists can do whatever they want because this is emanation, this is fuel. <laughs> I, I just love everyone's going cra uh, ship crazy. <laughs> And it's Man. like, does nobody understand what Friends with Benefits is? Uh, they realize that's not a no, I, I do understand what Friends with Benefits is. <laughs> you know what? I, okay, if the 190, sorry, the 100, 183 comments are just avoiding that kind of thinking, I applaud those guys because they are just like, nope, no, nope, gonna reference it, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> no, it's like mostly just people said nice, marvelous. <laughs> Very, there's a guy, there's a guy that said very close friends. <laughs> oh, wow, well, like Lyra and Bonbon. Bon. <laughs> Basically. <clears throat> oh, well, moving on. Uh, so, 
talking about close friends, um, I do believe that <laughs> you had one of my closest friends on your show, right? Daniel, right? Yes, Daniel. The, and the uh, interviews, we most I just talked about the uh, Project Siphonicon in general. Ah, so well, I'm looking at the timer, and I think that he clocks at 2020. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, wow, that 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 guy talks a lot. And you had Sophisto on, who clocks in at ten minutes and thirty eight seconds. Yeah, and, and then there's some, and then there's some other people which I am uh, interviewing, and which I which I am posting the day of this day of recording, which is today is gonna be a watch pony. Oh, and how long is his? Like, if you don't mind spoiling that timer. I don't know. I think it's around fifteen minutes. All right. Well, then it talks a lot then. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a little jealous because I've I do some interviewing myself, and I haven't managed to keep anything lower than twenty minutes in any of my interviews. I know oh, oh, there's there's one interview that I think reached half an hour. Oh, God, no, no spoiler, that is a... no spoiler, no spoiler. Okay, yeah, because... okay, no, no, no. Okay, I'm not saying anything <laughs> yeah, about that one. Yeah, because uh, no spoilers because uh, your fans would love to guess who could it be. <laughs> yeah. But still, I do agree with Twy here. Like, usually the show, like, our interviews, um, especially for me, tend to eat up an hour long. And, uh, editing for SweetieBot is just really painful for her. But, well, she's a robot. Well, don't really care. <coughs> but, yeah. <laughs> uh, long recordings are long. But Twy, any, any question for the man? I'm wondering how you managed to pull uh, so many uh, people like this. You try Dashy, Little Shy if I am, you know, Daniel from uh, at Project C Ponycon, Sophisa from Equestria Daily. I'm honestly impressed that you have this sort of lineup, and you've managed to be fairly regular with your content. This is something I've not managed to pull off, but that might be because I'm lazy. <laughs> well, uh, it's all got to do with hard work, really. With work trying to contact the people. So it's either then you get you send them an email, you add their Skype, you add their Discord, whatever you 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 have to work for it because it is not it is not easy to get the people in your show. I can attest to that. Yeah, I've, I know all about our problems with that. I'm still trying to organize a moment with Ty and Dagger to actually get an interview done. The last few times we've tried to organize, something's come up and we've had to push it back. Oh wait, did, wait, did, did, did you just say? Time dagger. Yep. Oh yeah. The reindeer. Um, I'm just gonna spoil it. I'm I'm interviewing him. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, but again, we we are currently also trying to arrange the time because he is busy and I oh, I can't reach uh, him. Fair warning for Ty here. Uh, do expect to reschedule a lot with him because of his busy scheduling. And yeah, uh, I did invite him on the show once or twice, just you know, just to have fun and talk about stuff. And he had to cancel because, well, uh, suddenly something happens. Like, I ain't gonna blame him because, well, he can't expect the unexpected. Mm. Yeah. So just a fair warning for that. But besides that, do you do your shows live? No, it was pre-recorded, exactly like the MBS show, really. Oh, yes. The pre-recorded way is safer because if somebody flubs, we can edit it out. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Yay. And and trust me, there, there's a lot of factors that uh, could happen while you record your uh, interview. It could be either, well, your English fail or it's just basic uh, internet. Oh, yeah, true that, true that. But still, it'll be fun at the same time, too. And um, the uh-huh. audience would participate as well. Yeah. Besides that, what else do you do? Because I'm looking at your channel here and... You did a few other videos, like, um, how do I put this, like, you, you did some random stuff too? Yeah, I mean, my channel is basically uh, divided into, uh, like, a couple of parts. It's divided into, like, uh, five parts. There's the random stuff and the memes I made, because I'm a memer, kinda. <laughs> and I just like to make it happen. And then there's the useless trans series, which is basically just stupid me, just, uh, a one day, it's a, it's a one, uh, it's a one, one, uh, one pre-recorded shot. So basically, I have no time to, if I fail, well, that's in the recording. Oh, okay, so it's a one shot. So kind of that's, uh, yeah, so it's a one shot thing, yeah. And then there's the Too Many Ponies, which I just look at the history and stuff. Then the General Detective series, which is, 
uh, basically me reviewing the episodes, which there's three, and there's much more to come, which I will make soon. Uh, uh, and then, well, of course, the one that is currently going right now, the BT interviews. Oh, right. So you're well known for your BT interviews, but uh, with the Journal of the Detective. So these are just basically episode reviews, right? And no, it's basically a, there's a bit of comedy in the reviews, which is uh, uh, usually I just started uh like the first part of the uh the interview uh, sorry not the interview the reviews basically just funny just I just made jokes tons of them. <laughs> so it basically is just a joke yeah. review style. Uh huh. But in the but in the end, if I eventually I do uh, finish everything, basically I just went serious and then on the. Uh, overview and also the recap and how I think of it. I, I am totally serious in that part. Oh, all right. So, will you be doing more for season seven, or are you still going to be doing more for the previous seasons? As I said on the uh, on my channel trailer, uh, the the episode is chosen by a random selector. Oh, really? No. So the wheel decide, which I decided to call wheel of wheel wheel of fate or something. I forgot. Ah, all right, all right. Which I decided to call that, and then basically there is, and then it just picks random episodes out of the bunch. I just said to the wheel, we'll "Decide, hey, uh, this is all the episodes I wanted in a small turning circle table," and then yeah. Uh, that is very, very random and very. Interesting. Yeah, because I never know what episode I'm gonna get. Pretty clever way to do it. I like the sounds of that. Yeah. Yeah, like like for example. Okay, I may, I may just, uh, I just spoiler like one episode which is coming up next. Like, the general you know, detective is, uh, is on the, this, the, the last time I did reviews on, uh, Spike at Your Service, which in many people's opinion is one of the worst episode, which I do also agree. Uh-huh. And then like, the, the next one, again, it's random, I don't know what's gonna come back up next, but I do already do, did everything, and then the next episode is season two finale. Huh, really? The changelings. All right, all right. Expect a lot of bug jokes. That's what. <laughs> yeah. All right, then. So, um, the way that you do this is, uh, in general, have you seen all of the episodes? I actually watched from season one the whole thing until season six episode. I, I don't know, like season six, like if I remember episode eleven, and then bug and then bug ball season, and then twenty eight pranks later. It's kind of random. I know that last one, but yeah. All right, no, I just I... like watched. I like. I like. I. Hey, uh, there is this episode in this, in my sub box, so, sub box and also my rec- recommended fee, so yeah, yeah, sure, I just give it a watch. Alright, alright, because That's basically what? the way that you're doing this with the random Wheel of Fate is kind of interesting because it's a good way to rewatch older episodes that you, um, haven't watched in a long time. And I yeah, think... I mean, yeah, it is also random because you, I can I, I get season 3, season 6, season 5, 4, 1, I don't know. Hmm, alright, alright, and well, when when season seven comes along, you can add that to the wheel too. And well, talking about season seven, uh, it seems that season seven is going to come out on April fifteen. So yay, that's going to be cool. And the title for this episode is no title for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> on the episode guide, yes, yes. <laughs> But still, um, it's coming out on April fifteen. That's good. And Twy, I think you mentioned something that I predicted the date of this. Yeah, I'm fairly sure it was uh you that I was talking to about the episodes and when they originally announced that they was going to be released in April. We were trying to discuss uh which dates we thought it would be released on, and I'm pretty sure you said. The 8th or the 15th, it was your bet. And the 15th, so. Well, it does seem um, logical because I'm looking at the calendar again. I would have pinged the 15th or the 22nd because, well, um, they're kind of in the middle. So uh, why not, right? Yeah, well, you beat me. I was expecting it to be on the, the weekends after that, the 22nd. It would be fun if they put it on April 1st <laughs> just because... But still, uh, but still, uh, that that'd be terrible. I know. Uh, but but still, we have an episode. Um, like we mentioned before, the wait is well not that long. It's just what a month away now. So that's cool. And uh, the poor fellow Brony reviewers out there, 
they are going to scratch their heads and think, oh god, what is happening? What is happening? Why are we here? Uh, some of them are already so far behind. Oh yeah, I'm looking at you, Silver. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but still, season 7. Wow, who would have thought that we'll be having 7 seasons of this show? I did. You did? Well, <laughs> besides the news that came out, but still. No, even before then, I think I said when we first discussed uh, when they announced season eight the other week, oh yeah, that I had heard rumors uh, years ago where they had apparently uh, decided that they were going to do ten seasons. Yeah, and still, but like, who would have thought that this show would have run for that long? Because when you take a look, see, season three was supposed to be the last. And in the end, we get another extra tree and a fourth one's coming out. So, woof, that's awesome. But besides that, but besides that, look at what it spawned. It spawned a plethora of entertainers, reviewers, interviewers, artists, musicians, writers, and cosplayers. So, that is awesome. That's definitely fun. And hopefully, the cons uh, keep going for a while as well. RonyCon is going to be, well, going, and, well, some of the cons are going too, and, well, talking about cons, um, see PonyCon, that's a thing too, uh, it's happening this year, um, if I'm not mistaken, all three of us are going, right? Yep. Yeah. So, it'll be fun to see you guys in person, and see you again, Twy, because the last time we met, we didn't really hang out for that much. No, we, we didn't get too much of a chance to, but... At Sea Protocon, we'll make up for that. Yay, we, we can do skit videos. Or, well, you know what, just forget the videos, we just hang out. <laughs> oh, when you hang out with me, it'll turn into a skit quickly regardless. <laughs> <laughs> well, just need to have the cameraman ready then. Uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll also be very happy to be meeting you two. Yeah, it'll be awesome, and then we can Yeah, do... actually, like, this is the, my first con. Oh, really? So first con. Yeah, so I don't know what to expect. So wait, uh, is this your first pony convention or first? Yes, it's my first pony convention. Ah, so you've been to other conventions before then? Oh wait, no, no. Uh, oh, I said this is my very first pony convention. Yeah, but there's other conventions, anime conventions, and all that. Have you been? Oh, there? oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, I've been in some conventions like that. Ah, all right. So pony conventions. What to expect? I got no idea. Well, I mean, I asked a little shy myself when we have some free time after the interview, and he mm-hmm. said multiple things like, "You have to uh, like uh, be first. You have to be, be. You have to be fast because if not, it's gone." I, I, I don't, how do I put this? I, I don't agree with that statement there because if you're the first, you get everything, and then if everything's gone, then. In all honesty, you're going to be spending a lot of money and a lot of time waiting in line. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically, like, uh, actually, he also said, like, buy everything online so you don't have to wait. Uh, but still, it's a convention. Like, uh, I don't know. I mean, but I mean, yeah, that, that's for BronyCon, which is, if, which is, uh, the convention that make, that made a line so long. It's like, it's gonna, it's, it's probably gonna, uh, it's li- like a mile long or something, I guess. Yeah. Oh, just kidding. I, I know it's not a mile long, but. <clears throat> well, you, you said that you're kidding, it's a mile long. I, I've heard new stories that it was a mile long. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, like, um, if I do, if I remember right, um, there was the uh, voice actress signing, and that line was long, especially to get Tara's signature. Whew. Oh, yeah, especially that. And like, see, PonyCon is going to be the first uh, convention that's going to bring a sh- person from the show. Yeah, like um, first in Southeast Asia, I think. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be cool. That's going to be cool. I'm slowly converting all of the Australian bronies to go see uh, see PonyCon. Uh, how many have you conscript? I-, I think we've got like a dozen people looking at going now. Ooh, wow. And I'm slowly... Slowly chipping away at everyone else's will. I'm, I'm going to invade Sea Ponycon with Aussies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, uh, I am from the Jatim area of, uh, Indonesia, which is not, not in Jakarta, which everyone knows. I'm in Surabaya and those stuff, which is, mm-hmm. uh, on the other way, other side. And then, like, there, I know there's the Indonesian Bronies community, which is the IDBC, which is the main one, but, uh, 
we are we are like grateful because in the Jatim area we also have a local community. It's called the uh, JBC Jatim Road Nice Community. If, okay, I'm just gonna shout out to someone that if if from someone from the JBC watching this, I don't know. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I mean, like, uh, I am like so far the only one from the Jatim area is gonna go there. So that I that I know anyway, with with that I actually know. I don't know, may- maybe there will be someone, but I don't know. Well, it seems that, well, if you do get, get the people from your neck of the woods to head up to see one icon, that'll be awesome. And you know what? I know. Da- Daniel should um, ask the people in the audience who's from where. And Twy, if you do manage to gather the Aussie there, like, you can turn it, see, and you can turn Project C Pony Con into Project C Aussie Brony are here con. <laughs> Well, considering that the Australian con hasn't had any updates in about eight or nine months, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be too hard to get as many people <laughs> as possible there. <laughs> yes, and then you know what? You should do a panel with me. <laughs> like, gather your people around so we can... <laughs> yes, make, make all all of my bro- Aussie Brody friends come and just sit in the panel. <laughs> Force them. <laughs> uh, Force so we all have an audience, whether they like it or not. Uh, they're a cactus audience. <laughs> Come in with all chains Australia. around their ankles. <laughs> uh, well, talking about a prison country, oh god, that's bad. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so anywho, um, so um, BT, one last question from me. And I see here that you started in 2017. So... Yes. How long has it been, like, officially from the start, the conception idea to, well, now? Okay, so, like, uh, the videos of the interview series started at, like, the first episode that I posted that is not a meme or a channel trailer is the January 5th of 2017. And then I upload stuff weekly, which is, I mean, good. So that means it's still gonna go be alive. And then, I have a ton of interviews that I have to post, which is, which are basically confirming that the fact that there is going to be an interview almost every week. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. But like in general, it's amazing how good the fandom is. To, like God, the perception, because I'm, I, I'm, I'm two months in and I already have a hundred. That is awesome. Consistent work does help. Yeah. And I did see your uh show popped up on the EQD slightly roundup. Yeah, and... I mean me me uh I, I myself has have pretty close contact with both Statisto and Cal Payne. Because most definitely I already of uh interviewed Cal Payne and also having uh hey, yeah, no sorry, Statisto. Why Cal Payne? Uh for, and also have Cal Payne's uh contact, so hey. Yeah. The, the, like uh, I remember talking to those two, and um, funny enough that Sophisto plays Magic the Gathering, and I wish I well, played Magic the Gathering when I interviewed him, so we can nerd out about cards. But I came in a bit late, so I didn't really understand Magic. Now I do, and it's a bit too late, but still. Eh. Uh, but anywho, uh, those are my question. And well, BT, thank you for coming on. Um, thank you for being an awesome guest. Ah, uh, thank you very much. It's it's my pleasure to be here. Alrighty then. So anyway, uh, before we head off, I need to well, um, bring up a topic, and that topic is what has been entertaining us this week. So I'll go first. Um, for me, what has been entertaining me this week has been, well, honestly, I can't say much. Like I don't think I've busied myself with. Anything interesting? Really? Oh wait, I just remember something. I just recently watched Central Intelligence, and that was fun. It stars Dwayne the Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart, I think. And yeah, though those two do make an interesting duo, comedic duo. Um, synopsis of the show is uh, Kevin Hart is having some kind of midlife crisis and doesn't want to go to a high school reunion. Suddenly, when he, when he declines the invitation to go to the high school reunion via Facebook, uh, he got a friend request. And the friend request is from The Rock. So, from that point on, 
high jinx ensue, and it's very highly comedic and entertaining. I, I, some people may say that it was not a really good show, but it's one of the show where I would say spending money in the theater may not be worth it, but renting the DVD is. I saw that movie in cinema. I thought it was fantastic. Really? You like it? Oh, yeah. I would have gone and seen it a second time if I had friends to go see it with. I mean, I, I watched the trailer and it's it looks like it's a very, very, very funny movie. It is. It is. Like, one of the things that I highly enjoy about that movie is the interaction between um, Dwayne and Kevin. Like, they have good chemistry together. Like, the banter they have, the few interactions they do was really good. And I think... In the earlier scenes, Dwayne was referencing um, bronies. Or am I nuts? Ah, uh, yeah, the, uh, the the rainbow unicorn, unicorn yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah like, that was brilliant. I know. Like, I, I'm I'm glad I'm not the only one that thought about that because oh gosh. At the same time, too, um, Sapphire Heart Song said that she recommended this movie for her list of last year's movie to watch. So yeah, why not? So yeah. As personally for me, I said uh, paying for the movie is eh, but renting DVDs, eh, why not? And at the same time too, renting DVDs means you can watch it multiple times. So that's good. <laughs> but Twy, what about you? What has been entertaining you this week? D&D and playing Don't Starve Together. Wait, at the same time? Uh, not at the same time, <laughs> obviously. I, I had a interesting game of D&D last night where one of the players has been uh, success- successfully gained the title of Death by Bridge. <laughs> okay, wait. Does this have to do with the Indiana Jones scene where he cuts off the rope and then he drops down and fails to hold on to the bridge or something like that? Or is it just even dumber? Oh, it's even dumber. We made a really not terribly great uh, temporary bridge <laughs> out of ladders, and then one of the heaviest characters that we had decided to try and cross it. Why? Fell off, and because they were so injured, the 20-foot drop into the water left them weak enough that the damage from the fall from hitting the water knocked them out, and then they drowned. So yeah, we had death by bridge. <laughs> Is this a first for your more, team? Um, yes, it's the first one in D&D entirely. <laughs> but even more uh, amusing is playing Don't Starve Together with Friends. Mm-hmm. It has been determined that I am the bringer of chaos and destruction because every time I jump into their server, uh-huh. everything goes to hell. <laughs> How so? But the game has seasons and different challenges for the seasons, and we've been struggling to get through winter for most of the week. hmm they managed to get through winter while I was playing D&D last night. And when I jumped into the server after playing D&D, uh, it changed to summer, and then everything burnt down. Oh, as, as soon as I jumped in, everything started going wrong. Fires started propping up everywhere. Everyone started getting killed by everything. It was amusing, but hectic. <laughs> wow, so it seems that your title of Ring of Chaos is, well, warranted then. Oh, yeah. Uh, it definitely serves that one of my favorite Pokemon is Absol, which uh, is known as the Omen of Destruction. <laughs> good, good on you! Yep. <laughs> wow. And BT, what about you, man? I think I have this one channel. It's on an MLP channel. All right. But I, it's, it's uh, about me and the love of cars. I, I like cars a lot. Alright. As you already know, Norman. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, so basically I found this one good, uh, one good, good channel. If I remember, it's Hoovy's Garage. I, I don't know if I remember. Yeah, it's like a car channel and this guy basically, he made suicidal car purchases. Okay, well, what do you mean by- I mean, by means of suicidal, he buys, he just buys car when he has the money. So wait. Either it's good, either it's bad. Oh no. <laughs> like, like, like for example, he just, he, like, uh, he he bought a Porsche that those old Porsche mm-hmm. that has two hundred fifty thousand miles on it. Oh wow, that's not okay. That yeah, that that's called suicide. He also uh, bought a an S class Mercedes. I remember he bought it for four four thousand five hundred American dollars, mm-hmm. and then he basically spent his whole year fixing the Fiat 
because uh, sorry, the V12 because it's just broken when he bought it. Well, obviously. And so wait, the his channel is uh, what he does is he purchases um random cars like probably some lemon that he buys and fixes yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it, it's, it is more of a, like he buys this random stuff for cheap and then he does stuff to it. So basically he buys, fixes it and well. Yeah, just, uh, I mean he like, I mean he, he like three, three months ago he, he just bought a random caravan, Dodge caravan. Mm-hmm. And then he also bought an NSX, those, those old ones which have a cheap and then which also have problems. Oh wow. Alright. Like because he himself is a ex car dealer. Oh. Ex car salesman anyway. Uh huh. And then, like, he's now making, uh, articles on this one website called <laughs> Auto Trader slash Oversteer. <laughs> All right. if, if, you ever heard of, if, if anyone here knows Doug DeMuro, yeah, that's basically it. Wow. It sounds like an interesting channel where he, well, like you mentioned before, suicidal purchases because buying multiple cars for, well, I won't say cheap, but still, like, Ugh. Yeah, and his uh, his reviews are comedic, so that's good. That's cool. So, what was the channel again? A uh, Hoovy's Garage. Hoovy's Garage. Alrighty Hoovy's then. Hoovy's Garage. Yeah. Alrighty then. So anyway, uh, that's been entertaining us for this week. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. And for me personally, at Norman Sanzo. What about you, Twy? I've changed mine up a little bit. Oh. Yeah, so you can still find me as Twilight Genesis on Film Fiction and DeviantArt. But now, on YouTube, like with my Facebook and my Twitter, they are both now under Double Pint Productions. Although you, you tweet at me with Midnight underscore Pint. Ah, I think you can change that too, really. Yeah, but I'm not going to bother. <laughs> Alrighty then. And what about you, BT? Where can the people find you? Uh, so most definitely they could find me in my channel, that's for sure, Detective BT, as in the name. And then they, uh, the people could also find me on Twitter, because I have to remember the name of Detective BT, as simple as that. Alrighty then. And well, if you guys would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. And well, over there, what you can do is um, support us by giving us a dollar. A dollar will help us a little and we'll get you a thank you every month. And if you want to help us even more, well, I will have to change this one because um, it's only for one now and I think I should increase it a bit. But you can also support us by giving us five dollars where if you have any ideas of discussion for us you can send it over there and we'll discuss things that you want within reason of course and also the thank yous and whatnot and sometimes for supporting i'll upload some stuff random stuff um for now it's just me in a deleted episode um one of the deleted episodes was something to do with uh, me doing a solo episode, which was kind of interesting. And well, like I mentioned before, if you do support, um, you'll get a thank you. And I would like to thank Lurker Cat, Pilot Genesis, Name Dragotorius, and Starstream for supporting. And thank you guys for your support because it did help me a lot for this month. And I do hope that you'll support me even more in the future. Thank you, Twy. You're welcome, Norman. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Also, please do subscribe to our newest endeavor on the... Hmm, well, right now, I'm not even sure if I should say this or not, because the review and discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio is a bit busted. So, the links might change in the future. I don't know. I'm still working on that one as for now. But, it's still available on the YouTube. Um, catch us there. Um, catch me, Silver Quill, and Seven Heart Songs. Talk about the Pony episodes, comics, movies, and other things related to stuff we enjoy. In one of our previous episodes, we had Matt Munchkin talking about Batman the Killing Joke. 
And who knows, probably in a future episode, you'll have me, Silver, and Fai here talking about Kung Pao, Into the Fist. <laughs> I can't wait for that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't wait either. I still have to rewatch the movie. My friend says he has it, so... <laughs> oh, I really can't wait. <laughs> but anywho, do subscribe. Um, Links are in the show notes. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Twilight Genesis. I've been v- Detective VT. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun and amazing episode of the MBS show. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>